How do you not have cult? Okay, so that, that's a really good question. How do you have not have cult? And you all know what cult means, right? <clears throat> I know of a so-called Sufi sheikh who actually literally, literally said that he was creating a cult. That I'm, and he's cre he actually said that, that he is putting together a cult. And that's kind of what he did. So <clears throat> cults are little groups that are not open to the outside. And they are groups that cut you off from others, especially others who don't agree. And cults are very dangerous. And usually cults have distinctive types of leaders who are often very charismatic and very manipulative and very dominant and uh, they will control you. And cults will often cut you off from other ties. They may even say, and you actually have some so-called sheikhs who will say you shouldn't visit your mother and father anymore. What? Why? Okay, and, and also, you know, you know, when you talk about these extremist groups, the violent extremist groups, they do that too. They cut you off from everything that you relied on before. And like the elders or the teachers that you had who would tell you that this is wrong, they'll cut you off from them very effectively. He's not a good Muslim, he doesn't know what he's talking about, he's this, that, or the other. Because they don't want you to go to him or her because he would say, that's crazy what you're doing. And then they have usually a charismatic leader and he takes over and you become focused on him. And therefore you can create people who, as it were, are sort of under a spell. <clears throat> and a lot of them are that way. They're not thinking anymore. They're essentially insane. And, and they're doing things that no rational person would ever do. But that's because they don't have rationality. And they've been cut off from all the props of rationality. Um, <clears throat> so cults are very dangerous. And we don't want to ever be a cult. And therefore, in our group, for example, we are conscious of that fact. And for that reason, um, the sheikh does not like to call him, he never calls himself a sheikh. He doesn't even like to be called a sheikh that much, even though we do. They say, here's the sheikh. He lets you do it, but he doesn't like you to talk about that very much. Uh, he doesn't like to talk about tariqa that much. He doesn't like us to emphasize the fact that we're qadiris, because that has a cultish tendency. So what about the non qadiris uh, You know, you're very, the Egyptians of you are very humorous people. I wish I could drink the water that you drank. And I, I was here the first time in 1973. And um, some of the jokes I heard Egyptians tell about Egypt, I'll never forget for the rest of my life. We don't have enough time for me to tell you one of them, but you know, mashallah, God gave you a great gift of humor. And when we went on our trip, you know, we stopped and listened to this one sheikh, you know, and uh, this was in Luxor. And uh, he was so funny. He's so beautiful. And he's a great scholar, by the way, but he's so funny. And uh, he asked us, so, so he said, so you're all Sufis? And I said, we're all Qadiris. He said, <laughs> It's like, you know, I want to kiss him, you know? But see, see how smart he was? It's like, we are Qadiris. And of course, he has nothing against that. But we are Muslims, aren't we? You know, we're not Qadiris to the... And that was just a, 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 a I think, very intelligent lesson from him. <clears throat> and, I, and I took that as, as, as a good instruction for me. That, um, you know, so, you know, you don't want to be stressing. We're Qadiris and so forth because 
that tends to divide you from other people. And we don't want to, you know, have cultish behavior among ourselves. Like we're better than the rest. And especially after saying what I just said about hope, how we hope to be little seed communities, uh, then we have to emphasize that. Because if you don't cultivate that properly, then we begin to think we're better than everybody else. And for that reason also, our Sheikh has always told us, the door is open for everyone. Everyone is welcome. Whether they're Salafi or Wahhabi or Shi'i or whatever they may be, you're welcome here. And if you want to listen, we're happy to talk to you. And if you want to learn, we're glad to teach. We don't have enemies. We don't oppress people and we don't have enemies. And, you know, we would like to benefit everyone. And in fact, I mean, I, I've seen um, people like Salafis, and I don't want to say anything bad about Salafis, and I probably shouldn't have used the word, but um, I've seen them come to us in the Gambia, <clears throat> and they have a very bad opinion about Sufism, and they have a very bad opinion about us, and then when they're around us a little bit, and they hear what we have to say, uh, they actually join, they become one of us. And I've seen that a lot. And I've seen other groups as well. You know, so we want to have the doors open and we don't want to cut you off from anybody. And if you do that, you're going to start a cult. Once you start cutting people off, that is the first step towards cult. Cut them off from the others. And that's why we also say that in honoring our silsila, okay, the silsila is what? Khidma wa mahabba. It is service and love. And service and love for everyone, right? Not just for you and me, but service and love for everyone. That's the end of cult. And everyone is a khadim, not a makhdum. That's the end of cult. And that's the beginning of success. And then also, um, uh, let me see, I forgot what I was going to say. I think we're out of time. Um, okay, so we don't want, oh yeah. And the other thing is that you cut the silsila if you cut people off from other paths. You know, so yes, we are Qadris and I love Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jilani. I can't hide it. I love Shaykh Abdul Qadir, he's the king. He's Sultan al Awliya. Everybody agrees, the Naqshbandis, the Rifa'is, the Suharawandis, everybody agrees. Okay, but you have to love also everyone else. You have to love the Naqshbandis, and you have to love the Suharawandis, and you have to love the, you know, Ba'alawis, and everybody. We're one family. You know, we're one family. We love them all. And if we cut you off from them, we cut our own silsila. You've heard that many times. It's not the first time you hear that. But that also has the beautiful effect that we don't have a cult. And we don't want a cult. And another thing too, we want you to always have access to everyone in the group. Especially people like the Sheikh or people like myself. You know, and of course sometimes that's difficult because of the number of people. <clears throat> but, you know, we use WhatsApp and that's about all I use actually. Um, I've gotten really lazy I've gotten to where I don't like email anymore and, and you know, I don't know the other ones. Uh, I know that the president of my country is a twit who loves Twitter, you know, but um, I don't even know what Twitter is. I've never used it once in my life, so you can laugh if you want to. It might be better than WhatsApp, I don't know. But, you know, we have to communicate with each other and, you know, we want everyone to have access. Everyone to have, and we don't want to have, okay, to see the Sheikh you have to go through this one and then you have to go through that one and then you have to go through this one and then you have to get a special visa, you know, and a permission slip and then you can see the Sheikh for five minutes. Okay, so that's not the way we do it. Uh, we like to be open for everyone 
And, you know, one of the questions that was asked was about different economic classes and things like that. And one of the things that you'll see um, with us, God forgive me for speaking about us, is that uh, our Sheikh accepts everybody. And he has really poor followers. And he has oppressed followers. And he has people that are in great need. And he is as much for them as he is for others. And he also has followers who don't have needs. They're actually very wealthy. And, you know, mashallah, we have a Zawiya now in the Gambia that's really beautiful on the Atlantic. And that's because of a murid who has money. And he just bought it for us like that. So I'm thankful. I'm more thankful. I, I don't know what to say. I don't know who he is, by the way. Or she, I don't know. But they did that. And then you have another murid, you know, whose father passed away. And he has a lot of money. And so he wants to build there a three-story mosque, you know, that will have an auditorium in the top uh, for his father, as Sada Pajaria. Okay, we need people like that, don't we? And I love him. And I love those people. But also, we're here for the poor. And Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani was for the poor. The poor for Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani were kings. And the kings for Sheikh Abdul Qadir Jilani were poor. You know, and uh, he could sometimes be very difficult on them. But he was for everyone, and we want to be for everyone too. Uh, God bless you all, and forgive me just rambling. And I didn't even let Ala 